have a tweet that it's because of me and not some other thing. Um, yeah, uh, as, as Matt said, um, I set up Six of Starts, and that's an online games company, a mobile company with my brother Dan uh, four years ago. And uh, we make all sorts of things from uh, <coughs> mobile, well, from, from games to people at the BBC and Disney and Channel 4 um, to um, all sorts of strange story like games and, and game like stories. And I also write for the Telegraph and I'm writing a book in my rapidly diminishing spare time. <laughs> um, and lately I've been thinking a lot about uh, how, we, how we can help people to talk to each other and how we can help people to collaborate and cooperate um, through games. And um, people, people have differing views. Obviously, that's, good. that's a pretty deep, trite thing to say. Uh, that's life. And I think, um, you know, I used to think, and, and I think a lot of people still think that we just kind of need to educate people to kind of remove those differences or to kind of correct those differences. There is a correct way to think. But um, ever since I started writing for The Telegraph and reading the comments, I realized that that's just not possible. I, I normally read The Guardian, New York Times, just for kind of politics check there. Um, <laughs> we, we uh, you know, it's just a good way to reach a different audience. That's how, that's how I see it. Um, we, we seem to find it kind of very difficult to come to a consensus on a whole range of things, you know, never mind politics, just a just whole range of different things. Politics is one of the, the biggest things, economics, religion, that sort of thing. And a lot of people think that, you know, even, they just think that even getting to consensus is wrong. You know, it's not even any point trying to even reach a middle point because, you know, I'm right. But even if we want a consensus, we don't actually know how to get there. You know, a lot of people don't even really know how to get there and how to talk to each other and start. And, you know, it's not just in the streets, it's also with people who should you know, frankly, no better. Um, and, you know, at, at kind of at all levels of society, we're, we're shown that, um, you know, combat and, and sort of conflict is really the way in which to solve or to sort of resolve differences. You know, one person wins, the other person loses. If you've ever watched Prime Minister's Question Time or Use Night, you know, what that, you know what that's like. And, you know, it's so clear that it's a kind of combative experience that uh, um, recently, Prime Minister's Question Time was uh, parodied in game format. Um, <laughs> this is PM user <laughs> game. Um, and you can, you can score literal points against your opponent by, uh, you know, usually not by replying to the question, but sort of repeating the question or sort of asking a different question or, or that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's not really about getting things done. It's about literally scoring points. Um, and, and this kind of assumes that, you know, politics and life and economics is really a zero-sum game. If I win, then you have to lose. And so if that's the case, you know, there's no point, really, in trying to cooperate or agree. You know, if you, if you want to succeed, you should just go out for the kill. Um, and you know, it's not really surprising you know, that, that this is sort of reflected in some of our sort of oldest and you know, well-known games, the fact that they're sort of zero-sum. So chess, you know, I win, you lose, Monopoly, you win, everyone else loses, no one else talks to each other for the rest of the day. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, actually, Monopoly is not completely zero sum because if you go past Go, you get some money and, and you get chance cards and community chess cards and stuff like that. But it's, um, I don't know, it doesn't feel like a very good game. Um, so, so there are other games, obviously, than, than zero sum games. Um, you know, games where we can both win, or at least not everyone who plays has to lose. And, you know, in reality, you know, reality can be like that. Reality is like that. And, you know, to, to know and to sort of play these games, to recognize these games, we sort of need to learn how to coordinate with each other. And so for a lot of people, you know, uh, a lot of gamers, you know, the, the best example are things like you know, Call of Duty and Battlefield. You know, a lot of these are still combat games, but they involve cooperation at the sort of team level. So, you know, you've got the red team and the blue team, and you've got the sort of your team's got to work together to, to beat the other guys. And for me, you know, my favorite game that I used to play a lot was Team Fortress 2. And you know, there's no way uh, to really win these games as an individual. You've got to play them as a team, and you've got to talk to each other, and you've got to sort of agree on a strategy. And uh, it doesn't matter if I'm the person or someone else is the person who, who gets the most kills in the entire game if you, know, you don't follow the strategy and you end up pissing off your team. Um, and, uh, you know, and there are other ways of doing this in board games. Um, another favorite game of mine is Settlers of Catan. Other board games have got 
cooperation kind of baked in. Um, here you, you've got four people, if you haven't played this game, you've got four people competing to build up the biggest settlements. And yes, in this game, only one person can win. But to build settlements, you need to trade materials and resources. And trades, you know, you can't perform trades by force. You've got to agree on the trade. And both parties need to agree and presumably to benefit from that trade. And, you know, I think I've played over about 100 games of settlers. Um, and it really teaches you kind of how to maximize games, games and trade with each other by sort of putting it in the context of a simplified system. You know, it gives you training wheels, and it, of course, it's really fun. Um, I was thinking about getting this T-shirt, but I thought it was like, too geeky. Um, the, 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 these are the two, two, two of them. Like, no one ever wants any sheep. In, in, it's like, oh, I'll give you like, four sheep for, for like a wood. Um, <laughs> like, I've seen some variations of this which don't have the tiles. I think that's just very confusing. Um, <laughs> so, so cooperation. Um, but you know, a, a lot of the games, these games that I've just talked about, they, they kind of suppose that someone still needs to lose. You know, a lot of people win, but someone still needs to lose. And you know, sometimes it has to happen, but not every day. And so some of the games that I find most interesting are the ones in which everyone wins or loses together. Um, one of these games is, is Pandemic. Um, in this board game, all of the players together are, are trying to prevent a new disease from, from basically killing everyone. everyone. Um, and, and you each take on different specific roles. So I might be a scientist, and you might be a logistics ex expert. We've all got sort of different special powers, and we kind of need to agree on a strategy to do well. And it's quite a difficult game because there are different ways you can you can win. Most of the time, you actually lose. Um, but what's great is that that you know you kind of you can't sort of leave someone out. You, you've really got to sort of work together to sort of succeed. Um, along a similar lines, there's um, this game called Space Alert, um, where where you you and your friends are crew on a spaceship, and you need to work together to prevent disaster. And that's a nice added twist, because when you play this board game, uh, you, you put a CD into your hi-fi, or well, I guess it's iPod now, and you, you're supposed to play a 10-minute track, sort of semi-random 10-minute track, which has um, all sorts of semi-random events, like you know, the airlock blowing up, or you know, stuff breaking, or attacks. And so you, know, you can just imagine you, you're sort of trying to work out how to sort of play this game and how to sort of plan your orders with all the other guys on the ship and then suddenly there's a meteorite attack or whatever. And you can sort of see that if you play this a lot, you probably sort of figure out you know, how to sort of make decisions quickly that everyone can, can agree on. And you know, it's, it, once again, it's a game that you know, even if you lose, it's still fun. Um, on, on a bigger scale, there's, uh, this game's called A Tale in the Desert. And this is a massively multiplayer online game, um, like World of Warcraft, but, but there's no combat. Um, in this game, the, the point of the game, if there is a point, is that you're supposed to sort of go and work with each other to build up massive monuments by the end of the game, because the, there is an end of the game to this. Each sort of game lasts for one or two years. And you know, some of the things you have to do are kind of solitary. They're about sort of crafting and making objects. But others, like, like the leadership test, you have to go and elect each other and, and work with each other. And you know, to sort of win the game, you have to make these massive monuments that require sort of massive amounts of cooperation. And um, there's, there's even sort of moving away from the kind of uh, traditional uh, computer games and board games, there's even a game, it's not really a game, even like a system someone has made that would improve debating. And um, I read about this in a book by Brian Christensen. And he wrote this book called The Most Human Hum Human. And it's uh, about, um, he's trying to basically pretend to be, you know, uh, let me get this right. It's about the um, Turing test, basically, where you're sort of trying to test whether a computer can pretend to be human. And he is trying to pretend to be the best human. Anyway, um, in the book, he talks about debates. And he sort of suggests a different kind of debate, um, because he's really unhappy about the standard of political and presidential debates in the US. It's just point scoring, like Prime Minister's question time. And you know, it, it's really terrible, because that's what you see on TV, and that translates down to um, schools and colleges. So he proposed the 
anti-Lincoln-Douglas debate. And basically what happens in this is you have two teams with two opposing objectives, um, you know, like pro-death penalty or anti-death penalty or something like that. And each team um, has to get together and they have, they've got about half an hour or something to go and come up with a bill, uh, like a five-point bill, you know, a five-point law. And they can't like each write their own one. They've got to come together and they've got to write one together. And once they've done that, each team then goes to a panel of judges and they have to argue why this shared bill uh, supports their goal. And the judges score both bills, sort of, you know, the same bill. So they, they score both sort of teams. And the teams are given the sum of the two scores. So in other words, they're, ba they're scored based on how well they can draft a law that provides a consensus, the best consensus, between two opposing viewpoints. And I really love this, because you know, there's no reason why people can't do this. This would be a great debate to do, you know, people actually having to work together. But I think it just sort of offends people's sensibilities about what debates are supposed to be about. Um, and so that's kind of one of the things, I'm sort of wrapping up now, that's one of the things that we were thinking about at, at Six to Start how to kind of add cooperation and coordination to more situations, you know, so that people can really experience and, and gain a toolkit to resolve differences in viewpoints and opinions in a kind of civil and constructive way rather than shouting each other. And, and I think it's really interesting that, I mean, of the things that we've looked at, it's, it's interesting that board games have this dynamic down best. And I think maybe it's something to do with the fact that um, you know, they are face-to-face -face games. Um, that's how you normally play them, and it's quite, it's perhaps a bit faster or a bit, bit different to sort of establish communication and trust. But, you know, as we go online more and we spend more time online and commenting on terrible newspapers, um, you know, we need to establish better ways of establishing trust without seeing that in person. That's going to be a challenge. Um, and so after we make... We're sort of making this game about zombies and running, getting everyone fit. We're going to be hopefully moving on to a game that uh, sort of mimics some ways of how board games uh, make cooperation fun and make people really want to work together and succeed as a team rather than trying to beat each other and bankrupt each other on Monopoly. So um, thank you.